pumped up right now about this hockey season, and I haven't touched a draft in almost like half a decade after making it most of my life for so many years. So I hear my boy Nahid's got some juice for me. We about to get educated today. <laughs> All right, to introduce you guys, this is my boy Nahid, or like he likes to go to, Mr. Thower Power. You know, we love what he has to spit in terms of hockey knowledge draft. He's been doing this for like 10 years now, has it posted. So we're looking forward to see what he has to say today. How are you feeling, man? Yeah, I'm feeling good. The draft is uh, just a, around us, just around us. Yeah, it's exactly. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah so Tuesday. just Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Things are moving quickly, but you know, this is a good opportunity to just you know share my two cents with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. We're really actually excited too. Yeah, perfect, man. We're just going to dive right into it. Okay, First segment we're going to jump into is uh, lucky number seven. Here, Naith, I want you to give me seven players that you think will be the truly steals of the draft. Let me start. Let me start, boys. So the first guy that I have is a guy by the name of Marco Rossi, a five foot nine Austrian. Yes, boys, okay. Austrian. So <laughs> this this kind of came out of nowhere. Okay. I don't think anybody expected him to be this this good mm -hmm. this quickly. But Marco Rossi is actually the first European to lead the OHL in scoring. Wow. Yeah, you heard wow. that correctly. Unbelievable story. So Rossi is currently ranked number three on my list. Wow. And currently on McKean's hockey, he's actually ranked ninth. So that to me seems like yeah, a bit of a steal. Yeah, great value. Um, I, I think he seems to be more in that stratosphere of a Lafreniere or a Stuchla mm -hmm. or a Oh, what'd you tell me about there's some clip about Rossi just undressing him? Yeah, there, there is a, no, there's check a, it out. Check there's it out. a clip check on it out. the top prospects game. So here we go. I'll blow it up right now. Marco Rossi in the corner, just move around Alexis Lafreniere like he's a pylon. Beauty. Yeah. You were lying about that one. <laughs> All right. Yes, so on to the on to the next one. So this one's a little bit off the board according to pretty much every prognosticator I've seen. Mm -hmm. I got my boy Ridley Gregg, who's a five foot eleven left winger turn center, mm -hmm. ranked number seven. My Yo, man on the Brandon Wheat. Yeah, games, dude. Yeah. Check this out, boys. This guy is ranked eighty third on Ooh. EliteProspects.com. So there's a there's a slight variance here, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, biggest reason I got Greg this high is simply at the top prospects game, nobody had more chances than the aforementioned. Um, he had mm -hmm. five scoring chances mm -hmm. um, and just got better thereafter. So um, after the top prospects game, he got a number one line center opportunity with the Brandon Weekends. Oh, all right. uh, last 20 games, he put up 30 points in 20 games. So he averaged about a point and a half points per game, uh, 26 goals. I fully anticipate this guy to take his game to the next level. The two guys that he reminds me of right off the bat first is mm -hmm. Anthony Sorelli, who I think you guys probably oh, both yeah. love. Sorelli's that's our a, boy, man. Yeah, that's, I love that kid. And then the, the next story is a little interesting. So you guys probably remember Pierre-Luc Dubois in 2016. Of course. A guy that went off the board, you know, a guy that was actually a winger that turned to a center. So I see a lot of similarities with Ridley Greg. Um, just a high upside, a guy that's got a super motor. Funny story about him, his dad, Mark Greg, actually went 15th overall to the Hartford Whalers. Mm -hmm. So oh, there's crazy. a bit of pedigree there too, some family history to the NHL. Let me ask you a quick question here. Yeah, um, so you said, you know, he's projected around 83rd. Right. At what point do you think he's a steal? If I get him in the top 60, 50, like, well, I'll be honest. where would you be willing to take Like, him? I mean, I think an honest steal is kind of in and around where the flames are picking. So if you're mm -hmm. looking in and around 20, mm -hmm. like if you're going to take this guy at 20, I mean, according to lists, I think he's available. Uh, hockeyprospects.com actually had him at 14. So, I mean, there are some prognosticators that do see value. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I mean, if you're talking about a guy that has the potential to even be like a number two center at worst in the NHL, yeah. I mean, man, you could call him a steal even going at 15. So, wow. I mean, if he's wow. gonna go there, yeah. if he's gonna go in the second round. Yeah. Like I would be a little disappointed if scouts waited for the second round to grab this guy. You brought up some really good players that I, I personally like in the game of hockey because I always say there's different types of players you need. You need, you need playoff guys and there's guys that are gonna excel in the regular season. So right. Sorelli, Dubois, like these are guys, Sorelli is so well known even from his junior days of being that guy that can score that goal. He may not get the you that 50. Goals. Yeah, he may right. not get you that 50 in the regular season, but he'll get you that 20 that you need yeah, exactly. maybe in the regular season. And then that five that, oh my God, you're praying for. So the one question I had was for a guy like this, 
Do you see him as like one of those top line guys who's going to be scoring a lot but can play that two way game? Or is he a guy like Sorelli where, you know, from a drafting perspective, five years down the line, those guys end up really doing well for contenders. So I'm kind of curious where we can see this guy land because centers now are so important in the NHL. And frankly, there's no such thing as a third and fourth line anymore. So a guy like Sorelli yeah. is so valuable because he can score you 20 goals in a year, but also defend the best players in the NHL. Right. And and so I think going to your point, um, it's important to know like the value of a two-way player. So, mm -hmm. you know, generally when I think of a two-way player, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking of a guy that can move up and down the lineup. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you have to keep in mind that Anthony Sorelli didn't even really get an opportunity playing a top six. Because they're, yeah, they're top just so sad. Yeah. So, so sad. sad. Mm -hmm. just, just making the most of your opportunities. So what's really interesting is even with Ridley Craig, uh, he played a bottom six role for Team Canada at the Ivan Halenka, which is a tournament that goes on in the yeah. summer before the start of the regular season. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he put up three points in five games um, in, a, in a very limited role. Mm -hmm. um, cool. You know, it's conversely, real. like, yeah. So, I mean, it's... It, the, the sky's the limit for I mean, yeah, the guy. So, I mean, right? intangibles, I think, are, are kind of hard. It's kind of hard to get value out of an intangible, but I think that we would all Yeah, agree but that. I think, you know, to your point then, this isn't a guy who's gonna break out into the scene and put up 70 points in his right. first season, right? right? But given the right opportunity, yeah. like he can excel on your yeah. team and really round out your team. Exactly, and I mean, you know, like it's not just about the points. Like yeah. we probably can all agree with Johnny Goodrow, like a guy that puts up monster stats. But then, then disappears when you need him. Yeah, it's difficult to get guys. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. And yeah. the one that hits home, you know, really hits home. So. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah. it, like I, I don't have any side when it comes to him, but he is so terrible to watch. <laughs> It's, it's 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 difficult at times it's because you know you you want the guy to play smarter hockey. Yeah, all of them. Dump it. Don't try and get through four exactly. guys every time. So but. now if you're talking about a guy that can play center, you know, a new position that he's been playing with this team just mm -hmm. this year, and to be able to really capitalize um, and put up about a point and a half points per game, yeah. you know, in his last twenty. I mean, that's and, a steal. And he's born in that's August too. So you know, you're talking about a guy that still has a lot more time to develop mm -hmm. versus some of his. Mm -hmm. So it just, it seems like a really good opportunity. And like I always say, it what matters is after the draft. It's a marathon. It's not about draft day. It's about everything after. Yeah, absolutely. So, Very well put. Yeah, Very well and put. I think Yermo Kikalanen would agree with that. You mm -hmm. know, when he took Pierre-Luc Dubois over, you know, the consensus guy, Jesse Pouliard. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> Looking like a genius now. So. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, man. So uh, let's transition that into oh, number. That's so good. Yeah. So, so number is so bad. <laughs> so uh, number three on my list is Tristan Robbins, who I have ranked at 11, okay. and uh, he's actually ranked 63rd on future projections. So I that to that. me is, is another you know off the board yeah. like big steal that potentially could come in the draft. Um, I've actually only seen his name on two lists, two lists other than mine, where he's okay. a top 20 guy. So I mean, there are again, you know, some scouts that that like what they see. Mm -hmm. um, the the one comparable I love drawing to Tristan Robin. So just to give you guys an idea, yeah, um, is Travis Konechny. So oh, wow. a, a guy Ooh. that a guy that's I know that's your boy, yeah, a guy that's a little diminutive, but I mean, you know, a guy that just fights for. for I like hard workers, man. I like hard workers. Man. Hard work. Yeah, that great, these guys man. like on a motor. So I mean, this guy, crazy story. Uh, last year, he plays for the Saskatoon Blades, which is a team in the WHL. Yeah. Um, last year, he only had 25 points. Um, but you know, this year they had guys like Kirby Doc, Eric Florchuk, so some guys that were drafted in the NHL. Yeah. yeah. Now kind of moved on or moved into different mm -hmm. positions. So it gave him an opportunity to be a top six guy. Um, he actually played center this year, first line center. Oh. Uh, in his last 31 games, he had 51 points, which includes 23 Jeez. goals. So I mean another guy that ended the year yeah. really hot um a guy that i mean every prognosticator seems to agree that i mean he's a guy that just is gonna fight you for every puck mm -hmm. um, and you know as Love we that. know like i mean at the nhl you can't just be skilled yeah. you got to be willing to fight so at Absolutely. 5 11 if yeah. he's gonna play center if he's gonna play right he's gonna provide value for mark him in many ways that's, that's so. my man right there yeah so oh yeah um, oh definitely oh, making note of him then oh absolutely saskatoon blade's got a good one all right, so who's number four on your list, Nadia? Uh, my next guy is a guy by the name of Jan Mishak. I like that so name. I, I, yeah. It's a, it's a cool name, man. He's a guy from the Czech Republic. All right, um, as, so, it would make sense. <laughs> uh, he's a guy that I currently have ranked at number 14, and mm -hmm. uh, the lowest ranking that I've seen him at is 34. Uh, that's, so that's on TSN, so that would include uh, Craig Button and Bob McKenzie. 
Um, so a little bit about my boy Jan Misak. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that jumps to me, I mean, I don't want to be busting out statistics all the time because it's not just about the numbers, of course. Uh, which I will dwell into a little bit later. Um, but Jan Misak was a guy that, um, I don't know how familiar you guys are with prospects, but he played for the Czech Republic at the World Juniors, which is a tournament you guys have fortunately both been to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys are Connor like, McDavid, thanks for bringing that home yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> telling you too good um and so yeah he played at that tournament with um a guy by the name of Jakob I forgot, I forgot his name man shit Jakob Lauko is his name he's okay. a third round pick cool. of the Boston Bruins uh a guy that went in the third round that just had a lot of hype uh, and then there was another fellow on that team I forget his name I think it was Jan Yenik okay uh, who was drafted by Arizona um so these guys were kind of like penned in as the top six and uh within like 10 seconds Lauko got injured um, and then, and then, yeah, and then Yannick, their other big guy, kind of had to take broke up the trio of Jans, man. He broke up the trio, man. <laughs> Jan, Jan, Jan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Jan Misa, kinda don't sleep on this one. Don't sleep. Came in there and. <laughs> Yeah, too good. Um, yeah, I kind of came into that top six role. Uh, mm -hmm. He had two points in like four games. So, or sorry, two points in seven games. Okay. So, I mean, the numbers weren't there, but I think like the willingness to be used kind of all around the ice, mm -hmm. just his smarts just really, really impressed me. It actually mm -hmm. reminded me a lot of a guy by the name of Brandon Saad, who you guys are probably both aware Ooh. of. The second he of the fell up. I don't know if he's on, like he fell so far down to earth. I don't even know if he's in earth yeah, or in hell. He might be in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, too good. So, uh, <laughs> what team is he even on? I'm yeah, he ended up back on the yeah, house. He's, he's back yeah, on the yeah. house. Yeah, yeah, but I think he's he's like on the like the is it is what's their farm team? Uh, Rockford? Is it Rockford? Rockford? Rockford. 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 Yeah, he's, Rockford with Ice Hogs. Ice Hogs. he's with yeah. the Ice Hogs. He's with the Ice Hogs for sure. Um, but I mean, top you know, line, top line, that. top line, no doubt though. Top line, no but doubt. But hey, man, like I mean, he's making six million. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, 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 right? Good <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, man. So, I mean, he had a great World Junior Tournament from that perspective. Yeah, uh, he and you can't fault him. And we know uh, international play is about there's chemistry. There's a disparity, with, yes. too. Right? And yes. there's a chem and it's like, such an important yeah, factor like, on chemistry with your line mates. Exactly. And if two of your line mates just get destroyed, like, it's what not, it's, it's, you're not no, able to They are so level. good. They still made it to the quarterfinals. So, I mean, it's impressive to see a Czech Republic mm -hmm. team, you know, deal with adversity mm -hmm. like that and still come out with a respectful result yeah um so yeah it was a great tournament Jan Misak uh, after the tournament uh, left the Czech Republic and came to his uh OHL team well the team that owned his rights uh the Hamilton oh, okay. Bulldogs yeah. um and he killed it boys he had 15 goals in 22 games uh he averaged over a point a game and again a, a versatile player that played both center and wing um so here's a guy again that has a great motor he can play anywhere around the ice and accentuate the players around him. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, again, you you might see Jan Misa go in the top 15. I've, I've heard, or I've not heard, I've seen lists where he's going to go to like a team like the Blackhawks at mm -hmm. 17. Um, so, I mean, the, the potential is there, is there, but I mean, I definitely think he's way better than going 34th overall, mm -hmm. um, especially a guy that, you know, has exemplified the ability to uh, acclimate so quickly into a new environment and dominate. Um, so yeah, that's my guy at four. Um, number five actually, is actually- I just want to bring, I just actually want to follow oh. up there with you on yeah. that one, because I feel like you said something really, really good there about just pro sports in general. And that's about the right. guys that can lift people around him. So I just want to expand a little bit on that because right. look, look at even the Raptors and the Clippers, the way yeah. we talked about Kawhi Leonard and the way everyone right. in Toronto kind of got better just with that atmosphere, whether it was him or not, right. it just made the team right. better. Clippers didn't really right. have that. So how much of that is the other players and how much can, you know, Jan really bring to the table in terms of right. making a team better for, how quickly he might yeah. get into the game as well you know elevating the talent around yeah. him as well so i i think it's uh the ability again to like i don't this i feel like i see this with all the guys i love yeah because mm -hmm. it's usually or trend is you know that two-way ability so mm -hmm. being able to get into the guts of the action you know mm -hmm. going to the net if you're going to tip the puck it's going to go in you're going to get hit and you know what you're going to absorb that hit get up and skate back if you have to so mm -hmm. that that relentlessness i think just it you can lead by example there yeah, right the it, moment he gets rocked gets exactly, up gets, yeah. it'll show everyone else like yeah this is the exactly. level of effort that's required yeah and, and then even just the ability i mean i, I like to compare it to like a facilitator role so kind of like a lebron james mm -hmm. where i mean you know it's exactly. not just goals. so i mean if he needs to pass the buck he will pass the buck at the mm -hmm. end of the day it's about winning and losing it's yeah. not about putting stats up on and he's a guy who buys it he clearly buys Absolutely. it right? which yeah. you know, I, 
in my opinion, to kind of go back to Brandon Saad, I think maybe that's a reason why he did fall is because, you know, you didn't really maybe like the numbers he put up in his draft year, but maybe they were like not considering all those other intangibles that mm -hmm. he brings. So it, it really is the intangibles. It's the ability for a coach to say, hey, you know what? I want you to kill penalties because I think that you're going to be good at killing penalties. And so he goes on the ice. Um, I mean, that goal that he scored was unbelievable. I mean, he just comes down the wing and he just pops it in. And I mean, again, he's not known to being, you know, a highlight real goal scorer. Yeah. But I mean, again, you know, when when the going was tough, Misa came in and he scored a big important goal. So I think again, kind of going back to that whole, like, you know, you want that Anthony Sorelli type where it's a guy mm -hmm. who's gonna just score when you need him to score. If it's five goals or if it's a goal a game, the point is, is that he's scoring big goals mm -hmm. when they need to be scored, as well as maybe getting those, you know, those easy goals as well right but he's just a sexy pick and so <laughs> amazing. Amazing. I love it I love it just so one amazing. last point before we move on to yeah, that yeah. one you actually reminded yeah. me so much so I'm a huge Portland Winterhawks fan in the WHL so a lot okay. of my favorite prospects of the last like maybe 10 15 years are from that team and I think we're the we're the kings of you know having such a solid junior team but then Absolutely. all of these guys get taken top 15 usually right. maybe I think Raddy fell to the very beginning of the second round I think I remember that, that correctly right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but I mean, I just think it's like Ryan Johansson, the way you said looking yeah. at a two way player from that age, I think that's a guy who struggled so much, such an incredible playmaker at that level. Yeah. And he worked his ass off, gained like 20 yeah. pounds of muscle in that sophomore season just to be able to skate and dance with these big boys. And so you're really hitting the nail on the head here with what I believe a 21st century NHL prospect should have. And it's that grit, it's that ability to get around. Like Dylan Larkin, the way he plays, he's a, he's a little inconsistent, but that ability to move and to use the body, that's that's really becoming the tail of the tape now for, for a lot mm -hmm. of these like younger guys, you know? It's getting difficult. Nino Niederreiter was the last guy I might have loved to, could have maybe been like that, but unfortunately. <laughs> maybe had too much love for that. <laughs> You just gonna take him in 12 Swiss straight cheese. fantasy drafts. Swiss cheese, Swiss cheese, baby. <laughs> Dude, the amount of fantasy drafts, this guy will oh. take a flyer on him just to make sure when he does hit, yeah. nobody else well, has to hit. I, I gotta tell you, man, I love Swiss players too, I mean, Kevin Fiala was one of my guys. Of I, I actually wanted the Flames to take, believe it or not, with that fourth overall pick. And I mean, you know what? Like, when you like a player, you like yeah. a player. Yeah, like I'd settle, I'd settle for 25 goals and about 200 hits, you know, in a really good season. Yeah. I'm hoping he can All do right. 30 and 200 one year, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I, I think like, you know, to add to your point, I think, you know, he's still relevant in the NHL because mm -hmm. Again, he's gonna get dirty, mm -hmm. and I mean, again, I think coaches realize that. I mean, yeah, there's a true appreciation to it. But mm -hmm. I mean, you know, what? you gotta be able to absorb those hits because if if you don't, I and mean, come playoff time, yeah. you score exactly. in the dirty area. Exactly. You're, you're not coming. Well, I mean, who's awesome. talking about Robbie Shrimp, right? Like that was a guy that went yes, 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 yes. yes. A super skilled guy. That's a really old pick that you brought up. Fancy, but I mean, yeah. you know, like, is that a guy that maybe didn't? You know, make it or didn't realize that full potential because he wasn't he was willing to buy in. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't willing to buy in. That's so, where I see Goudreau going. But yeah, that's the conversation so for I mean, another you know, day. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, yeah, hit me with your next one, man. Okay, number five. So number on the five list? is probably another one of my favorites in the draft uh, by the name of Luke Evangelista, who hails from the London Knights. Okay. Um, so Hallelujah. Uh, you know it's good when it's from London, yeah. man. Like that's the truth. Um, so I have Evangelista at 17. Um, the lowest I've seen him ranked is uh, actually 84th on Ooh. future considerations. So clearly future considerations and I do not agree on this player. <laughs> um, I mean, it seems I'm, like a I'm few just, where they're just way off the board compared to you. Yeah, it seems, I mean, I'm crazy probably. But, uh, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, your track record it, shows uh, otherwise. <laughs> so, I mean. uh, so yeah, a nice flyer on Luke Evangelista. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll be honest, I mean, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect. I saw him, you know, I saw some highlight videos of him at the beginning of the year. Um, he seemed to be really, really skilled. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna bust out a staff for you guys that I think just blew me away because here I am seeing a highlight reel of this guy and I'm like, man, this guy has hands, he has balls, and he has speed, okay. right? Like what more does a guy need? Me, so yeah. this stat blew me away. Um, he had. 61 points and I believe like 62 games and uh, of his 61 points 59 points of his 61 mm -hmm. points came either being five on five or Ooh, short. I hand. love wow. that. So, I mean, that, I love that everything about yeah. that. Hey, that you know me like, about that. Man. I mean, Tarana, like, Tarana, can you hear the man? <laughs> Tarana, <laughs> come in. Tarana, can you hear the man? <laughs> no, I'm and you know, it's funny because Kyle Dubas, who's you know their GM, actually yeah. has a chance at Robert Thomas. 
And I honestly thought he was going to take Robert Thomas mm -hmm. so badly, you know, that Toronto connection. And, you know, I don't even remember who they took now. I think it was like Timothy Lilgren, which I mean, I'm sure he's still good, but I think Toronto fans would have yeah, some Robbie Yeah, for sure. For so, I mean, you know, to, to get a guy like Luke Evangelista, I think it's just, it's impressive because, you know, again, I mean, he has a motor, the guy kills penalties. Mm -hmm. They were not even using this man on the number one power, power play. play. And he's still a point with per game Connor player. Connor McMichael. Wow. So, I mean, Connor McMichael. That's Massive. looks like i mean washington yeah right? like ross mahoney complete genius right that's their director of scouting mm -hmm. but i mean conor mcmichael is amazing but i mean luke evangelista i i really like uh you know he comes from a good program you know he was a first round pick in the ohl entry drafts so, i mean you know the pedigree is there, there yeah. but to see a guy you know like make the most of his opportunity um actually i even saw him at the top prospects game i think he was like on the third line with antonio stranges and i oh, can't wow. remember the third guy but i mean he set up the first goal to jeremy poirier a uh, beautiful play i mean nobody could guard him mm -hmm. you know what i mean again he was he was willing to get dirty going yeah. one on one right so uh, those are the reasons why I like him. I think that the goal scoring is going to only increase when he gets more, more opportunity. Teams yeah, on exactly. The power play, um, and being a focal point of that London Knights team. But I mean, we all know. I mean, if it's from London, you know, just take it. You know, like yeah, it like absolutely. Like I trust. Shout out yeah. Nazim Kadri. Bro, bro. <laughs> um, all they do is breed superstars oh, or yeah. do to you know make it. Oh, so. absolutely. So I mean, shit. If, if I had. That <laughs> Well, I, I would take Luca Evangelista, no problem. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, again, like the stats. That's a, themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's a massive stat that you just threw out there in terms of five on five play and that, that too just being shorthand most of the time. I mean, yeah. that, it's, that it's sells home to me right? for sure. Yeah, yeah, that, oh, yeah, that's an incredible stat. So, those would are you, the players you need on your team, you know? Well, actually, that brings up another point. Like, could this be just a case of where maybe it's a man amongst boys at that level and maybe it's a bit harder to transition? Because, I mean, going back to the Portland Winterhawks, I mean, that seems yeah. to be the precedence they set as a team mm -hmm. a lot of the time and they just don't transition individually to the next level. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and I would say that, I mean, my, my take is that much more, so it's emphasized even more in a guy mm -hmm. like an evangelist, if I'm understanding your, your question correctly, mm -hmm. is that, I mean, if he's already so polished in so many other areas where mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're hoping your your top six potential prospect is going to end up as a forward, that, I mean, if he's already able to, you know, skate back and not necessarily care about, you know, putting up points, like I think a guy totally. like Arthur Kaliev yeah. last year, um, I don't know if you guys remember Arthur Kaliev, but he was a second round pick of the LA Kings. Uh, he was a guy that like was supposed to go like really high, right? Like if I'm not mistaken, I think he had like a back-to-back 50-goal -back season in his 16-year-old year and his 17-year-old year. Mm -hmm. But a guy that was a goal scorer, but a guy that some prognosticators just thought was too lazy and mm -hmm. too inconsistent. Um, so I mean, you know, now you're hoping if you're the LA Kings that you know he's you gonna kind of teach he's you. gonna grow up. The back, that kind of stuff is and, hard. And, and you can't teach effort. You and, can't and teach that's, effort. And that's right? what I think. That's so, like I mean, it's built in. Yeah. There, so if you're you know? talking about a guy that that can score and he can be used anywhere. I mean, that's mm -hmm. probably the general theme in my guys is they have that ability. Swiss Army Knife, man. Swiss Absolutely. Army Knife guys that yeah. just, they will play wherever they will play and yeah. they will look good. Yeah, you, you gotta know? buy in. Yeah, it's because now, now you're looking for potential and you're saying, yeah. hey, like, you know, like, now I'm gonna give this guy instead of like 15 minutes of ice time a game to like 20, 25. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, dude. Like, are you kidding yeah. me? Like, I'm gonna be stat watching this guy, yeah. you know, for the next up upcoming year to see really like where his numbers end up. But I mean, again, and, yeah. even if he ends up on the third line or the fourth line in the NHL, I mean, mm -hmm. it's still a success because you got an NHL player out of it, right? And I mean, again, if this guy's gonna kill penalties for you, yeah. like those guys don't grow on trees. For sure. So I, I think that's a great spin on your kind of question right yeah. there, Siraj, is like, you can't teach this kind of stuff. So, so yeah. for somebody to be highly skilled and make them go into the dirty areas is a yeah. lot harder to do than somebody who's already bought in and said, I'm willing to do what's best for the team, you know? Mm -hmm. 100% and that's what you need nowadays like you can't just keep looking for the points because one thing you'll notice about the NHL draft nowadays is guys who are able to get 60 70 points at the junior level can still be found now at the in the end of third start the third, of the fourth round, round. Yeah, yeah because frankly teams need the, you think the Leafs should be drafting anyone that's trying to get points I yeah, better exactly. fucking hope not yeah, um, so exactly. I, I really like Oilers the, Oilers 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 yeah. Oilers I mean I, <laughs> do they do they even have enough draft picks for any players they need in that caliber I mean I don't even know we're, we're gonna get there we're gonna get there yeah, don't you that, worry that's a tough one. <laughs> all right yeah that sounds good so jump us into your final two players here. beauty and these ones will come and go very quickly uh so at number six i got a russian 
This guy has a cool name, yo. His name is Shakir <laughs> Mukamadulin. Whoa! You know that's up our alley, man. Yeah, yo, is this guy? Yo, this guy must. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this, if this guy is a, a, a family, yeah, family member <laughs> in MMA, yo, put the house, put the house. <laughs> yo, one on it. Um, so yeah, this gentleman is a six foot four behemoth, uh, playing with a team Salavat Yulev, which is a team in the KHL. I'm pretty okay. sure if we have any Russian fans, they are gonna hate that pronunciation. <laughs> um, but yeah, great. He's uh, about a half a point a game uh, this year. Uh, interesting, interesting prospect. Um, at the beginning of the year, a lot of people just thought that, I mean, he was just an offensive defenseman that could shoot the puck. Mm -hmm. um, he obviously has that, having six points in 12 games. Um, but I think his ability to be a little bit more responsible in his own end is coming. Okay. Um, so he's actually a plus five right now in the okay. KHL in his first 12 games. So, I mean, there is progress wow. there. In 12 um, games, you said? Yeah, and he oh, was about wow. a point of game defenseman in the MHL, which is their junior league yep. in Russia. So he's showing good promise, uh, big guy. Um, I, I would take a swing here at, you know, a top 20 pick, you know, you're Ooh. talking about a guy that has, you know, good potential. He's huge, six foot four. Oh, like, wow. my goodness. Where's he projected to go? Um, You know, there is starting to become a little bit more, more hype around for him. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you right now, um, McKean's hockey has him at 72nd. Wow. So okay. I, I'm pretty sure he's going to go before that just mm -hmm. because, I mean, if you have a six foot four offensive defenseman, yeah. like shit, dude. Like, Dime a dozen yeah. in the NHL. Yeah, right. Yeah, right? right? Like Colton Pareko right now. So, yeah. I mean, in all honesty, I, like, I'm pretty sure he'll probably go in the second round. Okay. You know, the Russian factor will probably be a reason why he won't go in the first. Yeah. But then mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like they love Russians too. Yeah. So I don't I don't understand. And to be honest, like Russian hockey's improvement in terms of becoming yeah, yeah. overall that, players. That's a system not development skills, thing for it? sure. Yeah. Yeah, they've yeah. definitely improved that overall around his Absolutely. game. Kucherov is, Kucherov is the best example. Yeah, that's the first name that came oh, to that. Yeah, I mean, even, yeah, even Ivan Provorov. Oh, you know, you're, beautiful. You're, yeah. you're talking about Yeah, a from a defensive that. standpoint. Interestingly enough, Ivan Provorov, the big reason that people say, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but he played right. so much hockey in North America, which is yeah. why as like, at such a young yeah. age, it was like you brought a Russian player who has that natural swab and ability to skate, and then you yeah. put him in the, in, was it the OHL that Provorov played in? Um, Provorov played for the WHL, the Brandon Weekend. Okay, so that, in that I remember reading that he was one of the better defensemen in there, and the OHL is more defensive anyway, so like, that's probably why he got yeah. so much attention. The OHL is the, the best junior league. Yeah, it's and, so from good. Alberta and, yeah. I won't, I won't. and to play contrary to your point, yeah. we thought the same about Nail Yakupov, and that <laughs> did not help him whatsoever. <laughs> Which is funny though, Neil Yakupov is more so kind of the classical figure, right? He, he, yeah. Provorov is very, like, I think he played even longer because they say that, like, almost from a in, very in young age, America, you like, he was exposed to, like, North American hockey longer than the average Russian born player was. I remember them saying mm -hmm. something along those lines. So, which is what made me really like him in terms of just a draft prospect to keep yeah. an eye on because that was the selling point. And, like you said, Neil Yakupov, a guy that we know played. Sarnia, and he was, yeah. he's absolute trash. <laughs> trash. Galchenyuk, Galchenyuk was the same thing, right? Yes, he's he not was. trash, but yeah. he didn't live up to his hype, and he was one of those guys that had that same mantra, right? Yeah, he yep. played a lot of his junior hockey in North America type mm -hmm. thing. Exactly. Well, he's 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 a half American, right? So like his 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 dad's Ooh, the right, Russian. Right, right. His yes. dad's Russian, and I think he grew up in Minnesota or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so who's number seven, man? Uh, I was just gonna add one last thing. Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, like that that archetype of what a Russian player is. I yeah. think mm -hmm. we all kind of agree that you know it is changing. You know, you got guys like Kucherov. Yeah. You got guys like the well-rounded. Yeah. Um. So I mean, you know, what's Shakir Mukhamadulin, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I just I want I want that guy on my team just oh, so yeah. I can say Shakir. Yeah. 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 Hey, I'm buying that jersey. Jersey, 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 yeah. jersey, yeah. jersey, yeah. yeah. jersey bot. Jersey bot. I'll get Shakir. Um, you get the rest of the name. Oh, yeah. I'll I put Shaq. That. Shaq yeah, with yeah, the K, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's sponsorship money right there. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But I mean, in all honesty, whoever I think is going to get this guy is going to be very lucky. Like, he's. That's good to know. I think he'll be good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, my last guy is a little bit off, off the board, like all my guys are. Um, <laughs> this is what we like, though. I, I love it. it. I love it. Uh, I, I got this guy ranked uh, number 21, and the lowest ranking I see him at is 51 on TSN. So oh, wow. I'm not going up against Bob McKenzie or Craig yeah. Bunman. That's those are like paid staff guys. But you know, I will say that Thomas Bordalo, 
Um, he kind of came out of nowhere for me. So this is a guy that uh, had a pointy game season this year. He's going to the University of Michigan next year. So a very good program. Okay. Like Quinn Hughes went there. Oh. Kyle Connor went there. So I mean, you know, we know it's a it's a good school that he's going to. I'm very um, high on here. But just so. yeah, I mean, just honing in on this guy though. I mean, I actually was really interested in Brennan Bersan, who's okay. also eligible for this draft, and this other kid named Ty Smolanich. Okay. They're both centers. So Brennan Bersan has a connection to the NHL because his dad's a player agent. Pat Bersan, you probably heard okay. that. Oh yeah. Hundreds of times. Oh, you know he's getting put on oh, the team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna take that shit work for sure. Shout out Austin Rivers. Oh, for sure. Um, but yeah, so I mean Thomas Burrow wasn't a guy that I was expecting to see. Um, but I mean he's a guy that just the more I saw him, the more I loved. Um he just he, he reminds me a lot of Tuvo Terrainen. So you know, you're, you're talking about the guy. I knew that would get your juices one. I knew that would get your juices. You're, you're That's the team. The That's the team right now. Oh, I'm telling you, man. I love Tuvo Terrainen. Mm -hmm. Imagine how mad I was as a Calgary Flames fan in Boy, 2000 just, yeah, and 12. Could have easily when I'm hearing had that Mark yeah, Jankowski is going to be the best player in 10 years. Yeah. You're the 14th pick. This man fell. I don't know why. That's and a feaster I, special. Feaster oh, yeah. feasted. You need yeah, that. You remember that? Mark my words, Jay. I'm marking your words. He's the best player in ten years, and you are wrong. Yeah. So, uh, what's worse, Feaster passing on him or Chicago letting him go? Oh, Chicago, <laughs> right? I think that one burns a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the NHL, getting a centerman, you're gonna have to draft them. So if Thomas Bordalo is a right. guy that, you know, is is a little underappreciated to be a first rounder, I don't care because yeah. if he's playing in the NHL at the end of the day, those are the hardest guys to draft. Absolutely. And I mean, if you get a top six here, I'm telling you, man, like who wouldn't take an NHL top six center with that pick? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, you have teams in the top 10 going for that. Yeah. So anyways, Thomas Bordalo, guys. Yeah, I look out him. for him. Look out for love him. Love it. Love the picks. Love the picks. These are amazing players you brought up. You hit the nail on the head, especially for maybe a classical thinker like me, who's liking all these Canadian right. boys who can put up the points. Ooh, Canadians are naturally two-way players. Well, nah, when Adam Larson pumped Ryan Johansson into the World yeah. Junior net, I remember that that's not always the case. And so yeah, for those picks. Exactly. Those are beautiful picks. My pleasure. My pleasure.